welcome to Capital Insights, a podcast offered by the WRA to discuss key advocacy issues that are important to property owners in the real estate industry. My name is Tom Larson, Executive Vice President of the WRA. The topic of today's podcast is property tax assessments. Specifically, we're going to talk about legislation aimed at making property tax assessments more accurate, fair, and uniform. With me today to talk about this topic is Senator Dan Fine from Fond du Lac, who was a first elected to the Senate in 2016 and re-elected in 2020. Dan represents the 18th Senate District of Wisconsin, which covers the territory between Fond du Lac and Oshkosh. Senator Fine is currently the chair of the Senate Economic and Workforce Development Committee and vice chair of the Senate Housing Committee. Dan also serves as the assistant majority leader of the state Senate and has a 100% voting record on WRA issues over the last five years. Senator Fine, welcome to today's podcast. Well, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it and glad to be here. Dan, we want to thank you first for co-authoring Senate Bill 630 legislation that updates state appraisal practices to ensure fair and equal property tax assessments as acquired or as required, sorry, by the uniformity clause in the Wisconsin Constitution. Before we get into the details of the bill, can you tell our members why you felt this legislation was necessary? Well, first and foremost, that university uni, uniformity clause you just cited as part of the Constitution requires that all tax assessments be assessed uniformly, meaning they're all done the same across the entire state. We have a big state and we have a little bit of a problem with some assessors doing things in a little different way. My bill would eliminate the repeated issues of bad practices implemented by some assessors in Wisconsin that run afoul of the Wisconsin Property Assessment Manual, better known as WAPM. These practices often increase the cost of ownership of property, which makes housing less affordable. My bill is designed to create uniformity and consistency in the assessment of real estate practices throughout Wisconsin. Um, you know, one of the details of your bill, uh, Dan, would require um, or would clarify that any ambiguity or inconsistency between the uh, Wisconsin Property Assessment Manual and the statutes uh, would weigh in favor of the statutes, that the statutes would control whenever there's uh, whenever there's some inconsistencies between the two. Can you tell us why that's important? Well, this was one of the driving factors for me to get involved in this bill. You know, for some people to think that a assessment manual that's put out on basically by people, not lawmakers, that they don't have to follow the state statute, that they can do whatever the manual says. So some argue that the state statutes take precedent now and that it's current law. But we found that it is not the case. You know, my ability to insert this directly into state statutes so there's no confusion or opportunity for assessors to individually create new policy or interpretation. The statute will control assessor practices when the inconsistencies between the manual and the statutes arise. I thought it was important to get that clarified. Well, you're absolutely right. And, you know, and I think it's uh, somebody would look at that provision and say, well, isn't that common sense? I got to tell yeah. you, that there was a, there's a recent uh, Supreme Court case fighting over a use value case. There's an inconsistency between the statute and the manual, and the, the justices asked the uh, attorney for the city of Kenosha, uh, which should control. He actually answered that the uh, assessment manual should control, and the justices were all over him. Like, how can the assessment manual override a statute? But it just goes to show you that if you don't make something, if you don't clarify that issue, you can have assessors and others, you know, interpret that law incorrectly. That's why I thought clarification was so important here. Well, we really like that aspect of the bill. Um, and I want to ask you a couple other questions um, uh, pertaining to the bill. Uh, generally speaking, your bill would prohibit assessors from determining the assessed value of real estate using uh, projected numbers. Uh, the bill actually requires them to use actual numbers rather than what they think the future will hold. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, what the bill in its amended version would specifically prohibit? What it basically says is that you can't use an asking price of a property for an assessed value. 
for example, you know, if I got a $300,000 house and I'm asking 600,000, you can't use any number just based on the asking price. Cause I can ask whatever I want. You got to go on what the real value of it is, what the real resale value of properties in that area are, and what the property of that house is selling. Same with rents, things like that. And, you know, we actually got to look at what the market rents are, you know, not what the asking rent is, you know, you can ask whatever you want, doesn't mean you're going to get it. Well, I think uh, today's current market would show you that that's really important where you're seeing actually selling prices uh, far exceed sometimes, you know, 30, 40, $50,000 over what the asking price is. And uh, conversely, you saw during the great recession, uh, sales prices far below what the initial asking prices were. So you can see these two different market dynamics demonstrating that asking prices are not actually a good indicator of what the fair market value is. That is exactly why this needs to be in the bill, because like you said, it's both ends of the markets, a down market and a market like we're in right now. The asking prices don't reflect the actual value, I believe. So this bill seems like it's common sense, but uh, it's opposed <laughs> by assessors in the League of Municipalities. Uh, just wondering what the chances are for uh, this bill's success, given their opposition to this bill. Well, we are in the process of you know talking with those groups to see if we can get to a common ground place. I think we're getting close. There's just a couple areas of clarifying some language, and but we're really getting there. And I do believe we will get something passed on this issue before the end of the session in 2022. Senator Fine, we really want to appreciate uh, your leadership in uh, being a co-author of this bill and being such a strong supporter of, of workforce housing, uh, property tax, and homeowner issues across the board. You've been uh, one of our biggest champions in the state Senate. We very much appreciate that. Well, I'm happy to do it. And, you know, it, it means a lot for the state of Wisconsin. You mentioned the affordable housing and, you know, it, it's stuff we need right now. So it's why I want to be a champion on these issues. Well, again, thank you very much. And to our listeners, thank you for supporting our advocacy efforts and for being a supporter of RPAC, the Realtors Political Action Committee. Your support for RPAC helps us elect lawmakers like Senator Dan Fine, who support WRA issues like making property taxes more fair and equitable. Thank you.